Hi, welcome to the video uh, where we're going to discuss the topic of pathological calcification. Now, there are two types of pathological calcification. They are dystrophic calcification and metastatic calcification. Dystrophic, um, dystrophic calcific calcification, excuse me, um, is usually involves in necrotic or dead tissue and usually has um, normal calcium. This is calcium, a uh, chemical symbol for calcium. And usually has normal calcium levels in the blood. So if you have a tissue, a gland that is dying, that's undergoing necrosis some, some way, whether it be coagulative, fat, gangrenous, you know, review the video on the types of necrosis um, that we talked about. Review that video of the types of necrosis. But if there's some kind of necrotic uh, processes going on or the tissue is dead and you have normal calcium levels, you usually undergo dystrophic calcification. And what happens is this calcium is is reacted with some kind of mineral minerals or some other kind of substance and it starts depositing on around the tissue so you get these hard you get these hard deposits uh, of calcium inside this tissue and that's dystrophic calcification you can go google dystrophic calcification you can look at a lot of pictures about dystrophic calcification and what it looks like um, I saw a pretty cool one where they're looking down at the chamber of a heart and you got the tricuspid valve inside the heart. Let me draw that a little better. So we go here, here, here. You know, you got three valves, uh, three little valves in the tricuspid valve of the heart, three little leaves, if you will that prevent backflow um, during during uh, the heart's pumping actions and you start seeing all these little calcium deposits on these little leaflets here and if you have these little bumps of of, of calcium here what happens is during um, when we age and stuff these leaves won't these leaves won't close all the way and blood from this chamber will pump back up into the atrium from the ve ventricle and that will cause a lot of problems. It will cause insufficient heart um, transfer of blood, heart pumping. So that's an example of dystrophic calcification. The next type is metastatic cal calcification. And metastatic calcification always Usually, I won't say always because that's an absolute, um, but usually increases, usually occurs when you have an increase in calcium levels. So when you have what they call hypercalcemia, this is hypercalcemia is the medical term for you have too much calcium in your in your blood. But when you have too much calcium in your blood, you usually undergo metastatic calcifications. And we're going to talk about right now both both of these and the differences between dystrophic calcification and metastatic calcification. So with dystrophic calcification, so you have two main steps: the initiation and propagation of of the pathological dystrophic calcification. So first of all you have a dead or dying necrotic tissue and then it's it's thought that these phosphatases, these enzymes that are inside the cell, the calcium is attracted to these cell membranes and starts initiating the process of calcium deposits on these membranes and they're white um, white hard 
hard substances when this calcification happens. And then the propagation step is, is dependent on how much calcium and four, three minus, how much phosphatate you have inside inside and, and in the neighboring tissues. And then these combine to form um, the calcium deposits. And so dystrophic calcification in, includes initiation and propagation of this process. And a common example is atherosclerosis. And you have the hardening of cell walls. You know, if this is your, your artery, and you have this calcification on the inside of your cells. You, there's several layers to this artery, and the, the most inside layer is called the intima. And it's between the intima and the next layer that this calcification happens, and it's this hard, um, hard um, hardening of this cell wall and narrowing and it, and it inhibits once you have an artery see a purpose of an artery also is to is to contract inward and to dilate and when you have when this when this becomes hard you can't do that so that's another reason why this hardening of the arteries is problematic is cuz it can't it can't dilate or constrict as needed So the next one is metastatic calcification. And remember that metastatic calcification is due to, let's just move over this way, is due to high calcium levels or hypercalcemia. There are four main ways, there are four ways by which people will have increased calcium levels or hypercalcemia. They are. Increased secretion of parathyroid hormone, destruction of bone, vitamin D related disorders, and renal failure. These are the four main ways by which a person will end up having increased calcium levels, which will then lead to metastatic, in some cases, metastatic calcification. So, an increased secretion of parathyroid hormone in the neck. You have, um, let me draw a bigger neck than that. So in the neck, this is in, this is someone's neck. You have, you know, the trachea. If you could view inside it, you could have the trachea. You have the esophagus, and then you have these glands that are called the thyroid glands. And then beside, then behind the thyroid glands, you have four parathyroid glands. And these parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone, PTH. Now what PTH does is PTH causes um, an increase in calcium. And there's a lot of receptors inside bone and kidneys that will react to that and that will help increase the cal calcium levels. And so if you get a tumor here, if you get a tumor or some kind of cancer or some kind of uh, tumor that, that causes an increase in P PTH, um, you know, these cells, they're called chief cells here. These chief cells, if they become, if you get too many of them and they are uh, stimulated in a way that causes increased PTH, well then, as a product of that, you're going to get increased calcium levels. Okay, with the destruction of bone, um, you know you have you have a bone here, and inside bone there there's calcium deposits. You have a lot of calcium in your bones, so if you get um, if, if some if the bone gets destroyed somehow, if there's some kind of tumor or cancer inside the bone, then the bone is going to be eaten away, 
and the calcium that's inside the inside the bone is going to you know go to the blood and then you're going to have an increase of calcium in the blood these are Paget's disease, multiple myeloma, leukemia are examples of conditions that can cause uh, destruction of the bone, within which will then cause um, increased calcium in the blood. Um, vitamin D related disorders. Let me get my pencil out here. Vitamin D related disorders, um, as you recall from physiology, vitamin D helps with calcium absorption. So if you don't have enough vitamin D in your in your uh, in your diet, then you're not going to absorb calcium in your in your gut in your small intestine. So if you have uh, too much vitamin D, then you're going to absorb way too much calcium. Don't be worried. Most people don't have a, uh, too much vitamin D. Actually, a lot of people, research is showing that a lot of people don't have enough vitamin D. But if you have uh, some kind of vitamin D toxicity levels, then your calcium levels are going to shoot through the roof, which will then cause uh, too much calcium in your blood. Or um, in the case of sarcoid osis, sarcoidosis, sarcoido, sarcoidosis, this condition here, um, it activates v vitamin D precursors, so then you increase more vitamin D, or, or you increase more calcium, so then you have hypercalcemia. And in the case of renal failure, renal fail um, can cause increased phosphorus, phosphoric acid and that will increase the calcium by default because the calcium and phosphate um, balance there has to be some kind of calcium and phosphate balance there's a balance here and when you have increase of one you're going to have increase of the other and if you have a decrease of one you're going to have a decrease of the other so there's a phosphate calcium balance within the body and so if the if you have renal failure and you uh, absorb um, reabsorb too much phosphate then you're also going to have a corresponding increase in calcium so these are the ways in which we can get um, patho pathological calcification we can have we can have dystrophic calcification that usually occurs in neurotic or dead tissues and usually has normal normal calcium levels or we can have metastatic calcification which is due to an in hypercalcemia an increase in the calcium levels and there is four main ways to um, have an increase in the calcium levels, an increased parathyroid hormone, some kind of destruction of bone, vitamin D related disorders, and renal failure. We'll see you in the next video.